So check this out. There's approximately 1.7 million mortgages that are exiting out of the mortgage forbearance program. Now, if you guys remember last year in March, when the CARES Act was passed, the stimulus package essentially offered a new mortgage forbearance program. Now, for those who don't know what a mortgage forbearance is, it basically allows homeowners to take breaks on their mortgage payments and not have to make payments for a certain amount of months. Well, with the mortgage forbearance program, it did give homeowners a couple of months, six to 12 months, where where they don't have to make a single mortgage payment because they lost a job or their business went down. Well, a lot of people were predicting, well, if this is all over and done, and let's say the mortgage programs are finished and it expires, well, then what's gonna happen to the homeowners? Do they have to catch up? Do they have to make a lump sum payment? Will that cause a housing crisis or a mortgage crisis? And dare I say, the recession. Well, just yesterday, the CFPB, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, made some proposals about changes to mortgage companies as to how they can stop or slow down a potential damage or mortgage crisis. And I'll give you guys what those updates are. All right, guys, welcome back. This is Sam Kwok with one of the Kwok Brothers. And I have some really important updates for you guys as far as the mortgage forbearance programs and how CFPB is stepping in to help homeowners. Now, like I mentioned, guys, there are 1.7 million mortgages that are exiting out of the mortgage forbearance program coming this September and so on, which basically means that homeowners will now have to start making payments again starting this September, and we're gonna see more of that happening in the following months after September. Now, the big question mark at this point was, well, if homeowners are expected to come back and start making payments again, will that possibly mean that there could be foreclosures because there could be some homeowners that are struggling, you know, they don't have the income, or they can't even catch up. So that was the big question mark at this point. Now, already the CARES Act did kind of spell this and there were a lot of changes along the way, uh, which by the way, guys, if you are enjoying this talk so far, be sure to subscribe and like this video. I mean, you guys, you guys know the drill by now. Now, the CARES Act made some rules and changes to the forbearance program. First thing first is that individuals that were qualified for the mortgage forbearance program they weren't expected to make a lump sum payment at the end of the mortgage forbearance period. So let's just say that you're a homeowner and you signed up for the mortgage forbearance program for let's say six months. Now in a traditional sense, at the end of the mortgage forbearance period, you were expected to make six months of lump sum payment to catch up and to resume and reinstate your mortgage status to be active and to be current. Well, with the CARES Act, what the CARES Act did was that after the six months, you didn't have to make a lump sum payment. In fact, what the CARES Act did was that you were only required to make that payment only if you choose to refinance or sell the properties. So that was actually a pretty good news for a lot of people that were getting into mortgage forbearance. Another thing was that with this mortgage forbearance under the CARES Act, it didn't hurt your credit score and it didn't affect your future ability to get new financing as long as you can show that you can make three consecutive payments after the forbearance. Now, fast forward to April 1st, which is last week, the CFPB does make an interesting warning to mortgage servicers and mortgage companies across the country. Now, real quick guys, CFPB stands for Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which this is a government agency uh, that creates laws, regulations, to make sure that banks are following the rules and Basically, the banks are playing by fair rules. At the same time, that consumers, normal people like you and me, are getting transparent information as to uh, what options we have in terms of getting mortgages, credit cards, and student loans. Now, the head of the CFP, the current acting director, which is Dave Ujio, interestingly, was appointed by uh, President Joe Biden, uh, he says on April 1st, he says, and I quote, there is a tidal wave of distressed homeowners who will need help from their mortgage serv servicers in the coming months. Responsible servicers should be preparing now. There is no time to waste and no excuse for inaction. No one should be surprised by what is coming. Now, I can see where Dave is coming from. Even though there's a lot of options and there's a lot of protection for consumers with the CARES Act version of uh, the mortgage forbearance. But what Dave is ultimately worried about is that a lot of these mortgage servicing companies and mortgage companies may come out and say, well, the consumers know best, so they're gonna figure it out. But what Dave is saying, well, no, not, not all of them will figure it out. And we need to make sure that they have the right information so that they're choosing the right option carefully when exiting out of the mortgage forbearance programs. So real quick pause here. So do you guys actually think that homeowners know what they're doing or no? Do you think you know the CFPB is doing the right thing by making sure that mortgage servicers are telling their homeowners, hey, this is these are the options? Or do you think that this is all just kind of an exaggeration? What do you guys think? Go and comment down below. We'll love to hear your thoughts uh, about what the CFPB is doing. 
So that was April 1st when he issued this warning and basically the warning says, hey, mortgage servicers should make sure they're, they're proactive, they should work with the borrowers, they need to make sure that uh, we're provo preventing any kind of uh, foreclosures that could be avoidable. And that was just the warning. It's, it basically goes on and says, hey, hey, banks, hey, get ready, get ready, because if you're not ready, then we can you know, face some real, real danger as far as people falling to foreclosure. Now, that was April 1st last week. Come Monday on April 5th, this past Monday, two days ago, CFPB issues a proposal of changes that mortgage service servicers, basically mortgage companies, should enact to prevent a wave of COVID-19 foreclosures. So hold on, that just implies that even CFPB believes that there could be a wave of COVID-19 foreclosures. Huh, interesting, isn't it? So that's the CFPB talking, right? It's not some YouTubers, it's not us saying, hey, there's gonna be a massive COVID-19 foreclosure wave. The CFPB thinks that there might be. So here's the CFPB on, on uh, Monday, April 5th. Dave comes back out and says, you know what? We issued out a warning, but I think that's not enough. Here's some proposals that we want you, the mortgage servicers, to change right away. Now, here's where it gets really interesting as far as what CFPB is proposing for the mortgage servicers to do. Now, the first thing is, is to give borrowers time. Now, in this proposal, the CFPB is asking mortgage servicers to basically to say don't initiate any foreclosures until after December 31st, 2021. So let's say your mortgage forbearance program was done on September and you're expected to make payments on October, you know, November and December. Well, the CFPB is asking the mortgage servicers and companies to not initiate foreclosures until after December 31st, 2021, which basically means that no one's gonna get foreclosed or no one will get the foreclosure process started on until 2022. So that's basically three months, assuming that if you're done with your mortgage forbearance on September, you technically still don't have to make payments for three more months until the, the mortgage servicers can say, you know what, that's it, we're gonna start the foreclosure process. Now, the next proposal is where it gets really, really interesting, and I, my eyebrow just literally went, whoa, like this is insane. So here's the second proposal that the CFPB is asking the mortgage servicers to change. It says, the proposed rule would permit servicers to offer certain streamlined loan modification, there's that word, back in 2008, some of you guys are getting flashbacks, to borrowers with COVID-19 related hardship based on the evaluation of an incomplete application. So that's really interesting. Basically saying, hey, if the homeowners don't apply for a, a healthy exit out of the forbearance program, give them some kind of a loan modification. And here's what the loan modification is. This is got me what this is what got me crazy. It says this provision would only be available for loan modification that do not increase a borrower's monthly payment and that extends the loan term by no more than 40 years from the modification effective date. So basically what that means is that if homeowners exit out of the uh, mortgage forbearance program and they're having hardship due to COVID-19, the CFPB is proposing that mortgage servicers quote unquote refinance or modify the loan into a 40 year amortized mortgage. And I'm like, that's insane. Now, now, depending on how you look at this, you might say, oh, that's really good. But for me, my, my perspective is that this is awful. I mean. Do you, can you imagine how much interest you're gonna pay in that 40 years? Now, in addition to the thought that a 40-year amortization would mean that borrowers would have to pay more interest over time, though the interest rates are really low, but what a lot of people don't think about is what happens in the next seven to 10 years. Now, recently I read a research article that suggests that every seven to 10 years, the average Americans will move. They'll sell their house or they'll relocate to another state because of a new job. I mean, things happen and right now is a great example. You know, a lot of people in California, New York, uh, they're moving into states like um, Texas, Florida, Nevada. There's a lot of relocation happening right now, especially if individuals have new jobs. Now, here's where I see the big, big, big danger as far as taking on the 40-year amortization or the 40-year modification loan. And that is, well, in the first 15, 20 years on a 40-year amortization, hardly any of your monthly payment actually goes towards the principal payment, which means that very small amount of your monthly payment is actually going towards the reduction of your loan balance. Now, what's scary to me is that if the statistics is right about individuals moving every seven to 10 years, selling their house and moving into another home, well, in the first seven to 10 years in their 40 year amortization, hardly any of their payment actually went towards making a principal reduction. And that right there is a little bit scary to me because when they sell their house at the end of the seven to 10 year mark, 
they're going to have no equity, no proceeds. In fact, there could be an argument made for that for the fact that they may have to come uh, to closing with cash to make sure that they pay off their mortgage in order to sell their house. So with this provision that would allow loan modification to go as far as a 40 year, I think it's a huge trap that a lot of homeowners can get stuck in, especially from the fact that if homeowners on average sell and move every seven to 10 years, they're not really building equity, there's no proceeds when they sell, and they're gonna continue down this path where they're not building any wealth and they're not building any equity. And there lies the danger and the problem that I see with this provision. Now, is this great for temporary? Sure, this is great if you wanna just stick a Band-Aid on your wound and that's it. But if your wound needs stitches, the Band-Aid's not gonna help. And that's exactly what this is. And I, I'm afraid that this may actually cause even more problems down the road. So that's just my thought. I don't know what your guys' thoughts are, but this whole idea of doing a 40-year amortization, terrible, terrible, terrible idea. And you guys can leave your thoughts and comments down below. Love to hear about it. Um, my perspective only gets stronger if I can get your guys' input and your thoughts on it. Maybe, you know, I'm thinking the wrong way. Maybe you guys have better thoughts than I do. So um, that's just the perspective that I see right here. Now, further down below in the article, which by the way, I'll, I'll be sharing this with you guys in the link description down below, the CFPB is also mentioning that this proposal can help reduce foreclosures. Now, again, if you think in opposites, right, if you're thinking in reverse, that just means that the CFPB is implying that a COVID-19 foreclosure wave could cause some kind of market correction and may cause a crash in the housing market. So I'm reading out here and says, foreclosures are expensive for homeowners with the average cost to borrowers of at least $12,500. Neighboring homes also lose value, with sales prices dropping by 1 to 1.6% after nearby foreclosure sales. So if we see a trickle effect of this happening, if there is a COVID-19 foreclosure wave across the country because of how homeowners can't safely exit out of their forbearance, so the CFPB is implying and the consequence of having these foreclosure waves could be home prices falling and therefore causing a housing market crash. So even, guys, this is straight from CFPB. This isn't our original thought. We're just interpreting what basically what CFPB has published last week on April 1st. And just two days ago, April 5th, I believe me, Kevin, just created a video yesterday about how the uh, Biden administ administration is uh, coming to bail out the mortgage crisis, which by the way, I do see this as a mini bailout, which allows homeowners to go delinquent for three months not seeing any foreclosures until after 2021, and also giving homeowners the option to modify their loan into a 40-year amortized loan. So yeah, I definitely see this as a possible bailout from the Biden administration, which by the way, a little interesting note, the CFPB, the Consumer F Financial Protection Bureau, is supposed to be an independent government, government agency with apolitical ties. So it's not necessarily supposed to be tied with the executive branch. Uh, and another interesting note, the CFPB is funded by the Federal Reserve, Wink, wink, right? That could mean something for you guys for those who have been following our videos lately. Uh, but so it's not necessarily the Biden administration, it's more so the CFPB, um, which happens to have an acting director that was appointed by President Joe Biden on, April, on January 20th when uh, Biden got inaugurated. So that being said, this is some crazy, crazy things happening. I mean, to me, this is both good and bad. I see some short-term potential good, but long-term, I think this is gonna hurt the, the mortgage industry as well as the housing market. Again, please leave your thoughts. I'd love to hear about it. And I do comment on uh, from time to time. So that being said, that is the latest news as far as the mortgage forbearance. Uh, we'll keep you guys updated as far as what's happening and how this impacts the housing market and how this all comes together. So with that being said, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.